Hello, buenas tardes. Um, thank you for, uh, for coming. Thank you, Art and Joan, the library, for the invitation to show some of my, some of my work. That's one of my newest pieces. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But um, what, should I, what should I say? Uh, basically, my work stems from um, my early years in connection to the uh, Chicano movement, but through, by route of the San Francisco State and the San Francisco State strike, um, I think that's where I kind of uh, became conscious in terms of, uh, uh, of what was going on in the world. And it was really through um, the, 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 the SS State strike and I think the, the war in Vietnam and the opposition to the war in Vietnam during the time, this is 1969 when I came to San Francisco to go to school. Uh, and then connected to that was uh, the Chicano movement and the struggles um, that ensued uh, around the Chicano movement uh, and, and in relation its, its relationship to the other struggles uh, in the uh, Bay Area, but also the struggles of other people of color in this, in, uh, in, in this country, and in particular was uh, for me, it was uh, the Cesar Chavez movement, the uh, Black Panther Party, and uh, the American Indian movement. Um, and so my work is, uh, there was no way I can escape not making political art after, after that in my, and with my um, orientation to it through um, other political artists that were doing work. Um, Rupert Garcia, and also the uh, the artists that were coming out of the mission in the 1970s and were doing work uh, around uh, culture and art, and uh, so it's all been connected. And I'm not sure what order these are in, but um, which one do I hit? The one over here on the right. Okay, let's see where that's me. Oh, okay. So. Uh, this is this piece is called Los Inocentes. I did it in 2011, and it was in uh, response to the um, drug cartels and all the killings that were happening in in Mexico. Um, it was organized by Luis Pinedo. He was a Mexican artist, and he invited artists from uh, Mexico and the U.S. to respond to what was going on. Um, this is a woodcut. Um, so this is what I did. It was exhibited at the University of Guadalajara, and then it expanded from there, and it went to different parts of Mexico. I wasn't able to go, but, but the work was shown there. And then that piece was just shown last year as part of a couple of other pieces that I sent to um, an exhibition in Spain, that basically the work was just sent digitally, and they printed them there, and they had an exhibition and all that. Um, and um, also there's an exhibition that happened this year in Argentina, and the works went there, and they were part of a collection of graphic designers. So I kind of, I guess I fit that realm because I've done posters and I've done, uh, and because these images were works have uh, text in them, they fall into that category. So, I was, so I've been able to uh, use them that way. And because of the way um, works are used now electronically, I can basically send the images around the world and they get, they get seen in other places. And that's, I guess this is in connection to memory. It's, um, you know, people's lives, and uh, certainly these young men. I have an, an aunt that was murdered like about four or five years ago in Chihuahua, Mexico, and uh, I think it's connected to the drug cartel stuff, you know. Uh, she was murdered in her home. Um, and the works, these works are basically all kind of related to, you know, my, my experience or uh, experience as a, as a Chicano and as a Mexican. Um, 
this was done for, um, this piece was done, uh, it's called Sevende, or it sells, or is sold. Uh, it was done for a portfolio on um, Posada, Jose Guadalupe Posada, and it was done through uh, Rene Arceo, Arceo Press out of Chicago, and it's part of a portfolio of artists from the U.S. and Mexico uh, uh, celebrating the 100-year um, legacy of Jose Guadalupe Posada. And so this was a little different for me because this one kind of tells more of a story. There's a lot of different characters uh, going on. And um, originally when I was drawing it out, I, I realized that the, the police, the ICE man was uh, arresting more than just an individual because they just arrest these people and they deport them or you know, they lock them up. But basically um, they're arresting a culture and that's why I added the the headdress on it, right, because it's connected to the culture. And my, I know within my own family, my parents were born in Texas, but my dad's family, they're from Chihuahua. And, um, you know, I had to go back after my uncles. My uncles used to go back and forth. Um, they lived in Salinas, but they would go back and forth. And once my uncle Joe died, there was no connection between the people that were living here and the ones in Mexico. So I actually went back and I reconnected with my my family in, in Chihuahua, and we used to cross the border back and forth. When I was a kid, we used to go to Ojinaga, which is close to El Paso, and just walk across the border and go see the family and then walk back. But, you know, that's because of the wall and the borders, that's, it's all, that's all been stopped. And I haven't been able to go back and see uh, anyone in Chihuahua for almost eight years now because of the... Well, my family won't let me go because it's just too dangerous. And, I, and crossing the border is always a real task. I have to fly to El Paso. I have to cross into Juarez, take the Chihuahuense, which is the bus to go to Chihuahua. But between Ciudad Juarez and Chihuahua, it's like a three-hour bus ride. And it's, you're going through the desert. And it's, that's where the killing fields are for the the young women that were murdered, so many young women were murdered from the uh, maquiladoras. And I've been stopped on that bus. Well, I haven't been stopped, but the bus has been stopped. And I sit there and I'm just like, don't look at these people. They get on the bus. They're usually, you know, got guns, they're plain clothes, they're military, they come in the bus, and they just point to you and you and you come out go get your things, they take you out on the bus, and then the bus drives away. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, let me get, just get, get to the border. That's, just let me get to the border, right? So, um, so it's a very scary proposition, but I haven't been able to go because it's just not safe you know, for me to go like that. So. But that's what the border has created. Um, I was in Charlotte, North Carolina, um, in September, of the, during this time of year, last year, uh, doing a residency at the McCall Center, and I did some things on identity, and um, this was one of the pieces that I did um, related to um, the undocumented, because there's such an attack going on in this country right now uh, for people that are working in the fields and working in the canneries and in the hotels and in every industry, construction, whatever. There's just like a total attack, especially now, on deportation and all this. So uh, this is a linoleum cut and silkscreen combination. Um, the figure right in the middle is my, my cousin, uh, Micaela, from Chihuahua, that I met when I went there for the first time and I met her. This was, the picture was taken a while back, but I, I used it because she actually is living in in uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico now. She works in one of the, uh, she's a really hard working person. She works like two jobs in the casinos there in Albuquerque. So that was the piece that I did there. And then when I got to, uh, when I got to North Carolina, I had never been in the South, but I ended up doing, uh, this is the first piece that I did. It's a woodcut on uh, how I was feeling about race relations in in this country, and um, 
and the things that are, that are going on. So this is called uh, the dog-eat-dog -dog world. And um, I added, after I did the bone and ladder, then I, I added the sheriff's star. Uh, because really, uh, even if of all the things that you see today and recently the things that are going on in North Carolina, you always see the police and they're always protecting property. That's their first, that's the first thing that they care about. Not human life, but property. They're, they're out there to protect property. And so anyway, that's what I did. And I kind of was thinking about M.C. Escher when I did this thing, even though it's not kind of, I can't do what M.C. Escher did, but I was thinking of the black and white and the way things, you know, move from one, one to another, uh, like a metamorphosis. And um, so that's what I did with this, with this piece. I think that's it, right? Yeah, thank you.